It is more about them than it is about the team. I cannot play with them. Cannot win with them. Cannot coach with them. Can't do it. I want winners. NFL coaches are measured in wins and losses, but some bring in tangibles that get overlooked. We've seen coaches come in and save players' careers, then finish 500 and can't save his own job. The tight end position has evolved over the years. These big guys have gotten more dynamic over time, and a very key point in that evolution process was the day that this dude showed up at the combine. Vernon Davis was one of the craziest athletes to ever play the tight end position. At Maryland, he set the school's strength record for tight end with a 400 and 60 pound bench and a 685 squat. He quickly became known as a weight room warrior, but in 2005, he put it on the field. 51 catches for 871 and six touchdowns put him in consideration for a day one or two pick. So the production was there, but then his combine performance completely shot his NFL draft stock through the roof. Vernon Davis was 6'3, 245 pounds with a 42 inch vertical and a 10 foot 8 inch broad jump. He hit 225 on bench press 33 times. Then he did something that no tight end, either before or after him, has ever duplicated. He ran a 438. As a result, Vernon was drafted 6th overall in the 2006 NFL Draft. He was selected by the 49ers who happened to be the same team that drafted Vernon's football idol. He looked up the T.O. and you can see the influence. They was addicted to the weight room, allergic to t-shirts. But look deeper and you'll see they both came from humble backgrounds, primarily raised by their grandmothers. But at that time, Vernon wasn't truly evoking the true essence of Terrell Owens as a football player, an extremely hardworking and passionate player who gave 100% whether in game or at practice. Vernon instead leaned in the direction of the T.O. persona, which led him to do things that T.O. actually didn't do much of. From training camp fights to late nights at the club, Vernon wasn't fully bought into the team, but in steps an interim coach who with one epic rant would change Vernon's career forever. I would rather play with 10 people and just get penalized all the 20 years earlier that interim coach was exactly what vernon had aimed to be in the league the best player at his position throughout the entire nfl a super bowl champion an all-around dog before he was a not quite 500 coach mike singletary was a two-time defensive player of the year he was eight-time all pro and ten-time pro bowler so when he walked in a room he commanded respect 20 years is a long time and time changes a lot and not his hall of fame player was just an interim coach a substitute teacher that vernon could run all over all right real quick before we jump in today's video is sponsored by upside inflation got us all thinking about ways to cut back driving less eating out less or buying less groceries generally speaking there's nothing fun about less and thanks to today's sponsor you don't have to cut back you can get cash back at the gas station or the grocery store with upside you can even get cash back from eating out upside helps offset inflated prices it does that by giving you cash back on your purchases something i like about upside is that you can take the savings from things that are essential like gas and food and use it on other the things that's maybe not so essential but at the end of the day they're important to you i mainly use upside at the gas station but recently it's come in clutch at a few local restaurants to get started download the free upside app either in the app store or on google play and use my promo code flimlo wraps and get five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more with upside you can earn three times the cash back that a normal credit card rewards program would give you. you can cash out anytime to your bank account or paypal or even an e-gift card for amazon or other brands they have a 4.8 star rating on the app store so click the link in the description and check out upside today shout out to upside once again for sponsoring the video without further ado it's time to jump in during the game, Vernon was flagged for unnecessary roughness after basically allowing another player to get in his head. He was a tough player but couldn't control his emotions. He smacked the defender in the helmet and they lost 15 yards. Then right there on the sidelines, this first time coach had some words for his superstar. Vernon, Vernon just, I told him that he would do a better job for us right now, taking a shower and coming back and watching the game than going out on the field. 
Simple as that. And to feel this next part, you gotta imagine yourself as Vernon. You're young and in your mind, you playing hard and showing passion. So you turn on the TV and see this rant for the first time. You feel a pain you never felt as your ego slowly dies. The moment that killed your ego goes free and become famous. And now you gotta see the killer in your feed every day. It never leaves, it's always there. <laughs> it's, it's always there, it's always around and you know, it permeates throughout throughout the, the uh, throughout the years i mean it's just there and you know i first heard it after that game i went home and sat on the couch and i turned the tv on it and, and there he was coach singletary i'd rather play with 10 guys than to play with someone <laughs> talking about himself so i will win it can't do it i told Vernon he better off going in and taking a shower <laughs> <laughs> you got it down so going back and reliving this, it struck me as odd that this was Mike Singletary's very first game. Your first game as head coach and you pissed off enough to drop this classic at the end of day one. I started to think this rant was just a little bit excessive, but that's when it hit me. This wasn't their first run in. So I checked to see what Mike Singletary got to the 49ers and boom, they hired him in 2005. The very next year, they draft Vernon first round and the rant takes place two years after in 08. During those two years, Mike was the linebacker coach. He probably bit his tongue a little since Vernon was on offense, but when he finally did get the job as interim head coach, he probably said to himself, if dude try any of that diva stuff with me, I'll shut it down in the backfield before it ever get going. Mind you, this is me just playing it out in my head. It feels like the way a linebacker would approach it. Then I found that interview I played a clip from earlier. It's called 49ers Talk with Matt Mayoko. So I played a little pool and let the whole thing run. And he actually confirmed what I'd come to expect. Yeah, when he kicked me off the field, we had had some, um, a few situations where prior to that, we had some situations where well, we had to discuss, uh, discussion about some things. And uh, there were some things that I needed to correct. And he would talk to me about that all the time, frequently, frequently. It was, it would come up. He wanted me to, to know that he was serious. Hey, look, if we're gonna do this, if, if you wanna be the best, I'm going to be tough on you. It's, it's, it's tough love, it's, there's no, I guess that was the moment right there who, that, that turned everything around. You know, once I saw that, I was like, wow, this guy's really serious. I, this guy right here, I mean, he's just tough and I can't beat him. I just have to, 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 to straighten myself up and uh, that's what I did. I, I straightened myself up and you know I did everything he asked me to do and I became a different person. The speech and other actions that went along with it got the best out of Vernon and dude made a massive jump. He came into the 09 season completely bought in to the team and ready to do whatever was necessary. His intentions were to become a winning player, which he did. And in the process, the numbers and accolades came too. In 2009, he had 78 receptions and 965 yards enough to make the Pro Bowl. His 13 touchdowns was more than he'd had in his first three years of his career combined. And even more impressively, it put him in a three-way tie for most touchdowns in the league with Moss and Fitzgerald. The man who Vernon had once thought was his worst enemy was actually the guy who got his career on track. Got him more respect in the league, led him to a breakout season, just in time to make him the highest paid tight end in the league. This one speech took him from a guy you couldn't win with to literally a guy who you couldn't win without. During the playoff runs in 2011 and 2012, over that two year span, he went for 100 yards receiving in four out of five of the Niners playoff games. In those five playoff games, he scored five total touchdowns. He was a matchup nightmare in a quarterback's dream. But there was more to his game than the 4-3-8. But if you don't look close, it's easy to miss. Unlike many of the more explosive tight ends, Vernon Davis was actually a plus in the run game. Actually, early in his career before his numbers picked up, one reason people pointed to was his blocking ability. Some felt he was so good at blocking that the Niners kept him in to help protect the quarterback instead of going get open. His college scout report said that dude was a good blocker. And if you look at PFF, they'll tell you the same story. In 2012, the Niners made it to the Super Bowl, and Vernon, as always, came through and did his part. But his six receptions for 104 wasn't enough. The Niners lost 34-31 against the Ravens. A few years later, he made it back to the Super Bowl, this time with Denver, where he didn't catch a pass. But even though he didn't go for 104 on six catches, dude just blocked his ass off, and this time, he won a ring. 
most people who've seen this rant may not know who inspired it, which is actually a testament to the impact that it had. He turned it around so drastically with these playoff performances that his career elevated and transcended this moment. There's a whole lot of coaches who rant and they rave, but they still never manage to get through to the players. This ain't everybody character, you gotta be yourself because every situation calls for a unique approach. But because Mike had spoken privately to Vernon, he knew in order to get through, he had to get through Vernon's ego. Once that barrier went down, Vernon's career took off. So even after Mike left, Vernon never forgot the lesson. Coaching can't be completely summed up in wins and losses. And player development can go further than teaching a dude footwork. This all-time great rant did more than entertain. It helped stabilize a career that otherwise may have been wasted. Uh, can't win with him? Yeah, man. Uh, can't do it? <laughs> <laughs> Singlet that's Singletary. Singletary moment, man. I was acting like, yeah, I wanted to, I, I looked up to Terrell Owens, man, so I thought I was T.O., man. I just... Yeah, I was being a I you was being silly. I was being a leader boys with your shirt off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's yeah in the club, <laughs> that, that, you know, pool parties with a shirt off. But it's all on how a lot of that, you know, you leave in the past and you move forward. And like you said, it's all on how you recover. How how are you going to move when you get thirty and thirty three years old? You know, people expect us to be men. They expect us to not be the same, but grow up. You know, grow up and 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 change. So I mean, it's how how are you going to respond to it? How are you going to going to act later on? It's not about how you start. It's how you finish.